I'm a bit of a creature of habit, so I'm sure just like you during this lockdown, I'm finding it really tough to be creative. I miss the studio, I miss having things around me. So in an attempt to try and kickstart that creativity to find some inspiration, I thought it was time to take a leaf out of the Mark Holtz book of bargain hunting and get down and dusty with some vintage lenses. So this, in truth, is more of a personal challenge for me than anything else at the moment, and is probably more than slightly inspired by the fact that none of the main camera companies are sending things out to me at the moment. Oh, and also, full disclosure, I didn't find this in the loft. I bought these lenses on eBay, but... But after falling back in love with the original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera in a recent video, I'm now left wanting to see how plausible it is to adapt these old vintage lenses to that camera and its micro four thirds mount. And I also want to kind of prove a point that getting a really high quality and characterful aesthetic is possible with next to no budget at all. After a little reading and, in truth, mainly watching Mark's videos on loop, I've settled on a few contenders to start this journey with. I want something fast and prime and ideally with an M42 mount. See, the M42 mount is actually really easy to adapt to pretty much any mirrorless cameras, and in particular, the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera's Micro Four Thirds mount. All you need is a dummy metal adapter like this one from KNF Concept, which does nothing else at all other than change the screw mount onto that Micro Four Thirds attachment. At this stage, I hadn't picked up a proper smart adapter, a focal reducer or speed booster as they're sometimes known, I'm still just using this dummy metal adapter. And that's because before I went too far into this as an investment, I wanted to see if this vintage lens thing was worth spending time on. And boy, was it. The first lens I picked up, and the one you're seeing all these test shots from, was the Pentagon 50mm f1.8 multi-coated and this was just 20 pounds and in all honesty this is the best and most fun 20 pounds i have ever spent on camera gear i'll go into more details on this lens in a separate video as it really does deserve it but instantly i'm in love and hooked on this whole idea manually focusing for video feels well it feels real and organic the combination of the original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera and this 1970s East German lens is honestly amazing. It's interesting and characterful, and most of all, it sits in that magical place for camera gear where it actually inspires you to go out and film. So clearly converting M42 lenses to micro four third mounts isn't just possible and plausible, it's actually an incredible amount of fun, but there are some caveats, especially with this old camera to be mindful of. There's the obvious stuff with buying old gear and especially off of eBay. Lenses are really delicate items. They can suffer from fungus, aperture blades getting oil and dirt sticking them open, focus rings getting stuck. There's just a lot of potentially hidden pitfalls with old lenses, so keep that in mind when you see prices that seem too good to be true. Next is the issue that's specific to the Micro Four Thirds mount and this Super 16 sensor, and that is the crop factor. It is killing me. It's somewhere at near 2.8 times a crop, so this 50mm lens is getting close to a 140mm equivalence. Whatever it is, it's ridiculous. So for certain, I'm going to have to invest in one of those speed boosters if I'm going to continue this little lockdown experiment. 
I'm just hopeful that when I do get a speed booster for this camera and the M42 mount that it won't affect the aesthetic of the image too drastically. I guess time will just tell on that one. The last issue, and it's very specific to the original Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, is the lack of image stabilization. Obviously, none of these vintage lenses are gonna have any kind of optical image stabilization built in. So shooting handheld is just really not an option. And, and for me, that's how I like to go out and film. So you're really stuck with having to use a tripod or something else to stabilize your footage, as even the best attempts to fix in post aren't gonna help you with the micro jitters that are present with this camera. So this video is really just the first of a mini adventure for me, a way of holding myself to account and challenging myself into looking at these cheaper vintage lenses. I'm particularly interested on how they work with the micro four thirds mount of this Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera and to see how good things can get without having to break the bank. So to think that you can get an image that's this good and this characterful for less than $500, well that's just ridiculous. And the fact that this lens in itself costs less than 20 pounds, well that just excites me to dig a little deeper. For more information on this lens, there's some links below. And whilst you're down there, why not consider subscribing to our channel or maybe even signing up to our Filmmakers Club on Patreon. That's been my grab and go review, vintage lens style. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.